Welcome back to Bash Bros and episode 25, I think, don't quote me on that one, of Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. So the last time you all were here, it was the Keeper Lit pay-per-view and that card looked a little something like this. Overall we came away with a 63 which was very very good by our fourth or fifth best show we've ever done and here is the breakdown of it. Um, as you may remember because I had to because it's been like four weeks for me again um, a lot of things had to change on this card due to the fact that so many of our talents were double booked um, which is partially why we came back for this episode because a lot of the matches that were missed on the pay-per-view are going to be happening tonight on Wanted. So the very first angle was of course Viper and Kelly Ray uh, having a massive brawl and getting arrested which was a, a cover story for them not being able to wrestle. Michael Satamora then won a women's battle royal to get the first shot at whoever won the championship between Viper and Kelly Ray. Uh, the Grado Talent Agency, um, they were, we were supposed to reveal who was supposed to be the or who's going to be Amir Jordan's partner, uh, but unfortunately that partner was double booked. Unfortunately that didn't happen, uh, so hopefully that will that reveal will happen on Wanted tonight. And the big one was Conor McGregor's in-ring debut against Chris Hero, in which Chris Hero was able to retain uh, the notorious pro wrestling title. Of course we did a wee double turn in this, where Conor McGregor kind of became the heel and Chris Hero uh, became the face. Main reason being that Chris Hero I feel like he's kind of run his, run his role as a heel and now we've got to turn him face so we can have a lot more heel contenders challenge him for the title. But that was Keeper Lit, so let's take a look then at the storylines that are going to be happening going forward. So as I just mentioned, Chris here was now face and his first challenger for the title is going to be Pentagon Jr. Um, Pentagon Jr. is still uh, following the orders of the Master, who's yet to be revealed and Sonico recently joined him as well. Uh, Pentagon Jr. is pretty much our top heel in the company at the minute. Uh, so yeah, expecting good things from that. Uh, so these two here are the finalists are going to end up feuding a bit over the title. To, you know, after whoever wins it, wins it. The number one contender will be decided in either one of these two uh, fellow female feuds. So either Tessa Blanchard versus the, the Yoshi Joshi, uh, Tessa Blanchard versus the Joshi wrestlers uh, might lead to establishing who'll be the new number one contender or uh, Alpha Female versus Zia Brookside. Um, so these two obviously uh, are also spin off feuds from the tournament. Tessa has a bit of a grudge against the Joshi wrestlers. Um, my plan is to kind of have her beat. Riho and Maki Ito and then kind of face Maiko Satomura as like the final boss because that's what Maiko is, she is the final boss and then also on top of that then Alpha Female for Zia Brookside was set up uh, with Alpha injuring Zia leading, her, leading to her injuries costing her the ma her next match so just that stereotypical David versus Goliath feud there between the two of them you may have also noticed then on our storyline screen that there are a couple of tag team feuds that's because uh, Tonight, we, tonight on Wanted, we will be announcing a tag team title tournament to officially introduce tag team titles. I think our tag team division has grown beautifully over the last couple of months. Uh, with, and also, I feel like very naturally, we haven't had to be like, look at all these tag teams have all coming at once. You know, you have seen storyline progression to these people either joining forces or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited. Um, Grizzly Lone Vest vs Kings of the North has kind of been happening anyway. Um, Dynasty Warriors vs Grado Talent, Grado Talent Agency has also been kind of happening in the long run as well. Uh, it's just that these will kind of also tie in then to the overall storyline of the tournament itself. <coughs> and the last, last storyline then we haven't talked about is Coach Doug. <sighs> so... If you're new to the show, Coach Dog was a storyline that has happened because of a joke. A um, couple of episodes ago, I titled one of the episodes Love is Dead, and the thumbnail was of Easton Reese and Doug Williams, and I made the joke on Reddit. Don't worry, haha, Love is Dead is not referring to Easton Reese and Doug, but you know, I could be convinced to do a storyline. And yeah, 
Someone said do it. And that's me. I've been called out. I've been called out. So we are going to do a somewhat of a romance slash bromance storyline with Doug Williams and Easton Reese. So this will involve Easton Reese turning face somewhere down the line. And yeah. Like I, I love Doug. Doug is currently a road agent for us and I'm gl- I will happily like really happily put like continue to book him on screen just not as a wrestler um <laughs> uh, oh and also side note he has recently started wrestling for icw on the wwe network which i am so happy for doug to see him who has had such like a it's like a 26 year wrestling career i think doug williams has had and to see him get like on the wwe network long overdue um yeah, so super happy for that. Uh, but yeah, so Doug Williams will be becoming a coach for Eastern Race. I believe that is everything to discuss. Um, there isn't really any news elsewhere. So, without further ado, let's get in to booking the show. Okay, and we are back coming from Belfast in Voodoo. It is Thursday. It is Thursday. Yeah, Thursday night wanted. Um, so there's a couple of wee matches I, as I said before, there's a couple of matches I have taken from the pay per view that were missed and put them in here. Uh, and we are main eventing with the women's title match that should have been on the pay per view uh, between Kaylee Ray and Viper. Uh, also on top of that, then we're looking at furthering the Juicy Wrestler versus Tensa Blanchard feud. And again, as I said earlier, uh, the announcement of the Tag Team Tournament. So let's get into it. So on the pre-show then, uh, I had Sonic and Pentagon Jr. Again, this was one of the matches from the pay-per-view. Uh, partner up to face Sugar Dunkerton and Dean Allmark, just a couple of face jobbers. Uh, this is just to give uh, Sonico and Pentagon a bit of momentum. So in a superb match, Sonico and Pentagon defeated Sugar Dunkerton and Dean Allmark in 1437 when Sonico pinned Sugar Dunkerton. Uh, Pentagon was head and shoulders above the rest, I assume that, and Sugar Dunkerton was the weak link. Uh, 52 overall, very good. Pentagon, 65. Like, <laughs> Matty, it was a pre-show and he just brought it anyway. <laughs> um, Sonico, 50. Dean Allmark, 47. Again, like that's really good from Dean. Who is considered a jobber, so I'm glad I kept him a bite. Uh, and Sugar Dunkerton 38. So, still on the pre show and um, backstage, Tessa Blanchard says she was able to find a partner just as big and bad as herself to face the Joshi wrestlers tonight, and that is Alpha Female. Um, this isn't going to be a, a constant pairing going forward. This is kind of just heels doing heel things, the thwart baby faces. Um, 39 overall, I'm not surprised, neither woman is particularly great on the mic but that's okay so opening up the show we have conor mcgregor announce the tag team tournament and the brackets look a little something like this so we have an eight team tournament and in the first round of it we have the mighty don't Neil versus kings of the north we have the great o talent agency versus dynasty uh we have the Birds of Prey versus the Cyborg Wolves, and we have Grizzled Young Veterans versus the Filthy Generation. So as Connor is running down the brackets, uh, Dynasty come out and they're like, you know, you might as well just give the titles to us, you know we're going to win anyway. And then Grado Talent Agency, Grado and uh, Amir Jordan come out to face off against Dynasty, and it comes to blows. Uh, Dynasty is getting the upper hand until Kenny Williams, who is the new signing for Great Hotel Agency, uh, comes out and uh, comes out and due to the numbers advantage, is able to send the heels packing. Um, so the Great Hotel Agency now consists of Grado as the manager and Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan as the tag team. Uh, the main reason I kind of had them together was because they already had uh, established experience due to their teaming up on NXT UK. I personally am not a massive fan of the the team, uh, but it gives Kenny Williams a chance to do something. He has been kind of floundering a wee bit 
Moving on then, so in a bout that had fantastic heat and great wrestling, Ace Austin and Carlos Romo defeated Birds of Prey in 13.03 when Romo submitted Fleish after a botched interference from Kid Lycos. So Rich Swan got a 53, Jody Fleish got a 43, Carlos Romo got a 46 and Ace Austin got a 48. Bit weak from Ace there, um, but then also on top of that, awesome from Carlos there. <laughs> um, yeah, overall really good. Uh, segment overall 47, which is very solid. And then Ace Austin and Carlos Romo had excellent chemistry teaming together. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. That's actually cool. That's really cool. Um, it also kind of sucks because I wasn't planning on having them team for that long. And that might change plans now. They could be a bit of a, maybe not a, a permanent unit, but they could definitely be an individual's team going forward now. So why did Kid Lycos get involved? As you know, Kid Lycos and Kid Lycos Jr. Uh, brought Rich Swan into MPW as their partner when they were feuding with the Filthy Generation. Um, the Cyborg Wolves then went on the kind of feud with Kings of the North while Rich Swan was still feuding with the Filthy Generation. Rich Swan said to them, look, it's okay, I got this. Uh, you guys do your thing with Kings of the North and I'll do this with the Filthy Generation. Swan then started to partner up a bit with Jody Fleish. I can see there at the bottom, so the Cyborg Wolves are going to turn heel eventually. Um, reasoning for this is Rich Swan obviously told them, you know, look, you guys go to you, and, you know, kind of kind of separated himself from the Wolves, and then almost immediately started to partner with Jody Fleish, and they're going to feel very slighted by this, especially for the fact that they brought him into MPW. But yes, so that is kind of the reasoning behind that. And that will be actually be one of the feuds in the tournament too. So next, in the in-ring segment where Doug Williams comes out and starts to thank the fans for his lovely send-off at the last pay-per-view. However, while he is speaking, the lights go out and Pentagon and Sonico appear in the ring and start to attack Doug. They go to sacrifice him to the Master, but Chris Hero and Easton Reese are able to get there in time and save him. 55 segment overall, uh, Pentagon and Hero probably would have carried this segment because they're the two best on the mic. But yeah, so this is done to one, kind of establish that connection between Pentagon and Chris Hero, because obviously they're going to feed going forward, and then also to establish that connection between Easton Reese and Doug Williams. For the Coach Doug storyline. Next up, in a good match, Rio and Maki Ito defeated Tessa Blanchard and Alpha Female in 1539 when Maki Ito pinned Tessa Blanchard. Don't know why it says using underhand tactics. That wasn't supposed to be what happened. Uh, but we'll get into that in a minute. So, Maki Ito got a 42. Riho got a 44. Alpha Female got a 41. And Tessa Blanchard got a 46. Maki Ito has a lot of bonuses at the minute between her connection with young female demographics and having a groundswell of public support. Overall, 43. Um, so, I don't know why it says underhand tactics. What was supposed to happen was Zia Brookside was supposed to come back and distract Alpha Female leading to her kind of coming away from the match long enough for the Joshis to get the win on Tessa. Which then does two things. One, it furthers the feud with the Joshis and Tessa. Because uh, Tessa can be like, oh yeah, you, you just can only win by being sneaky. Um, and then, you know, uh, then also continues the feud of Alpha Female versus Zia Brookside. Because Zia Brookside continues to be a thorn in the side of Alpha Female. And in the main event, in a bout that had fantastic heat and great wrestling, Viper defeated Kaylee Ray in 2022. And Viper wins the Notorious Pro Wrestling Women's title. Uh, Kaylee Ray had a 52 and Viper had a 45. I'm going to tell you why I decided to go with Viper as my first women's champion. So, one is that she was very uh, prevalent in my mind because she has recently debuted on uh, WWE Raw as fucking Dewdrop. <laughs> um, which is a fucking slap in the face to anyone who has followed her career up until NXT UK. Um, fucking Dewdrop. Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong, I am so happy that Viper is on Raw and in WWE and that's awesome. But pairing her with fucking Eva Marie <laughs> and calling her Dewdrop. Anyway, that's the first reason. The second reason is in my first playthrough of this, uh, like when I did, before I recorded it, Kelly Ray was my first choice, and I kind of didn't want to go down that first route again uh, because I want to try something new. I want to keep it different from what I did it the first time. 
Uh, just to kind of keep it interesting for me uh, more than anything else. And thirdly, um, I wanted it to be, I wanted the winner of the women's tournament to be very different from the winner of the male tournament. So when we did the male tournament, the P12, uh, Chris Hero won the title, which is a, which was a American heel. Uh, and in this one, I kind of wanted to be a bit more of a, a feel-good story. So I wanted a British female, or British face female wrestler to win this one. Um, and Viper is just a fantastic face. Um, she really is like, yeah. So those are my reasons why I wanted to go with Viper instead of Kelly Ray. Yes, Kelly Ray is probably the better worker in this, um, but I feel like Viper. After a couple of wins, we get a bit more momentum and getting more over, we'll probably start to be able to match Kelly Ray in terms of in-ring performance. So that is the end of the show. Uh, 53 overall, which is good. Um, I am happy enough with that. I think uh, the women main event, th also WWE, take note, you can have women main eventing and not shove it down our throats that they're main eventing. That's what really quality is. Sorry, that's just my rerun. Anyway, so um, yeah, so Viper and Kelly Ray delivered a main event level match at 50, which is great. And then yeah, Conor McGregor's promo, the announcement of uh, the tag tournament, is also uh, was was also a strong segment. So overall, 53, very happy with. So news coming out of Wanted is not very much, although I will say. Um, so Kings of the North in Over the Top Wrestling, same Kings of the North as ours, but just obviously a different faction for a different company. Um, Trend Seven was apparently a part of it and got kicked out, but Mark Haskins made way. Woo! I don't think the AI gets what the whole theme of Kings of the North is supposed to be. <laughs> uh, okay then, yeah, sure. Because Mark Haskins and Trent Seven are Northern Irish. Fucking hell. Anyway, uh, no real news otherwise that I can see. But yes, so... Other than that, I believe that is everything for this episode. I don't know when we will be back. Maybe July week two, if nothing happens in between. I am planning on having Viper have her first title defense then. And I am also planning on doing the Cyborg Wolves heel turn. So that might be a good... Uh, a good time to come back but other than that that is everything for this episode if you enjoyed it please do subscribe and like and leave a comment about any ideas that you have for storylines or anything going forward and with that all said i will see you next time on bash bros